In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to modify the T4 templates, which are used by the Entity Framework, in order to build entities that meet our direct needs. We'll first take a look at how the Entity Framework uses T4 to generate its entities, and then we'll move on to understand how you can actually modify and extend T4 templates to create entities that match your exact needs. Let's go ahead and get started. Previously, when we took a look at how to generate our entity model off of our database, we generated the model that looks like this. And we also took a look at the default data that was generated from our existing T4 template. We took a look at things like the entities, and we looked at it had things such like the various factory methods built into it, and the various context stuff built into it. Now, what if I want to generate models that are slightly different than the default? What if I don't want my factory methods created? What if I don't want fact, uh, regions created? What if I want to change the naming convention of things that are being done? How do I do this? Well, the great news is with, the, with NT Framework 4.0 and Visual Studio 10, they finally moved away from the proprietary code generation tool to generate the NT Framework entities to using the standard T4 templates. The great thing about this is that means that you can create your own template or modify the existing template and have the code generated and outputted the exact way you want. To do this, what you need to do is go into your EDMX file that you've already created and simply right click within the design surface. When you right click, you want to go down to add code generation item. When you select that, there's going to be two options given to you. The ADO.NET entity generator or the self tracking entity generator. We're going to go ahead and utilize the entity object generator as this is the default that the T4, the default T4 template type that NT Framework uses. So we'll call this custom dime cast model.tt. We'll go ahead and click add. Now it's going to take a second to spin this up, but eventually it will get done. And what happens is it will come over to our solution explorer. You'll see there's this new custom dime cast model.tt class generated. But before we dive into that, first take a look at the content of this Dimecast model designer.cs. It's now empty. The reason that it's empty is because we've chosen to use a new template, and it's cho it's going to move the class logic out of the main class and into a new class. You might want to make sure you pay attention to this because otherwise you may come looking for stuff and go where to go. Well, if you're using your custom templates, it's gone. And with our new templates, if I open up the template.cs file or model.cs, you'll see all of our generated code is now here. And I can still open it up, I can still look at it, so I can go into you know, my models and I can look at my factory methods. Now how do I go about making changes to my model so that I get a different output when my template is run? To do that, just simply need to double click on the .tt file and let it open up that file. Now once it's done opening, you'll get something that looks like this. Now mine is highlighted and has syntax highlighting built into it. By default within Visual Studio, you will not see it the same way I'm seeing it. You'll see it all in one single color and it'll basically look like a notepad. In order to get it to look like this, you need to download a new add-in for Visual Studio. And to do this, what we need to do is go up to Tools, Extension Manager, and you're going to look for the Tangible T4 Editor and include that into your app, into your Visual Studio ID. You can do this by going out to the online gallery and just basically type in an intangible T4, find it, install it, and you'll be off and running. Now to start making changes such as removing our factory methods and removing our regions on our entity, what I want to do is I want to do a search for entity type. And I want to find the comment that says Write entity type classes. The reason for this is this is the portion of the template where I'm going to now start creating all the various entities that are outputted off my data model. Now, if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could do stuff like remove my serialized attribute. Um, we'll go ahead and leave that in because I do actually want that. But what we really want to do is I want to go ahead and say, if it's not abstract, you know, write the factory method. I want to go ahead and get rid of this. And by simply commenting out this code or removing it all together, I can now save my template. And when I go and rerun my template and look at the code that's generated, it will look completely different. So let's go ahead and bounce over to our code. 
Now here's our entities we were looking at a minute ago. And you'll notice one thing's different right away. In my author class and episode class and all the other classes that are generated, I no longer have that factory method. In fact, let's add this back and see how it's regenerated. Now that I've added the back, my factory region is there. And so I can show you that making that simple change, bouncing back to my class, does in fact remove it. So let's go ahead and add those, or remove it yet again. And let's do another thing. I want to go ahead and remove my regions. Not a big fan of regions. I think they produce less than desirable code in terms of look and feel. So let's go ahead and remove those. Let's go ahead and bounce back to here. And you'll see now my regions are gone. So I can now not hide my logic, I can actually see it. This is just two simple examples that you can do in terms of changing the code. If I wanted to remove the generation of the on changing and on changed calls, I can remove those as well. I can even change them so maybe they raise events differently. It's really up to you. It's, it's the possibilities for changing this is completely endless. I would recommend before you start taking making changes that you maybe create a backup file of it and make, better yet make sure you understand exactly what you're doing before making changes because slight little typo or slight little uncalculated change could have a massive ripple effect and could cause you some heartache and some headache. So there you have it. You, you can see that the default template that is used to generate our entity model is fairly straightforward and will generate the default look and feel but it's extremely easy to make a change to that default template in order to have the outputted entities exactly match the style that you want. So I hope you learned something. Until next time.